Hello. I titled this podcast, Low Self-Esteem Equals Control and Abuse, High Self-Esteem Equals Loneliness. My name is Eric, and welcome to the craziness that lives inside my head. You may be wondering why I title this podcast Low Self-Esteem Equal Control and Abuse and High Self-Esteem Equal Loneliness. Well, it has come to my conclusion, let's say, when I sometimes I sit and think about, you know, when you get older, you sit and think a lot about the relationships that I've had in my life. And I found that, okay, when I was drinking and drugging, I had very low self-esteem. And I remember when I drank and drugged, I seemed to always, sexually, sexually that is, I seemed to always get the man of my dreams. Sexually, I must add, sexually. But after the sexual part, it turns out to be a very controlling, very abusive, you know, controlling meaning the only reason why they was with me to begin with because they was looking for someone to take care of them. And they, I had one who stowed for me. I had one who only come to my house unless I can give him something to eat or something to drink. And usually always, I was... Being I was uh, drugging and drinking, I was the one to come to when they don't have, when they get dry, they want a liquor or they need a drug. And we all know the story, you know, you give me sex, you get the drugs. You give me sex, you get the liquor. You give me sex, I put a roof over your head. And that was only because of my low self-esteem. Because and, and I only felt I felt that was the only way I'm going to get this so-called man of my dreams. And I have to say, man of my dreams meaning sexually. Because when I got sober, they weren't that weren't the man of my dreams. Because when I got sober, I wanted more of a relationship. But that was the relationships I had when I was drinking and drugging. And I used to. Uh, I should be ashamed to say this, but I used to have this conversation, uh, especially when I got sober, I used to have this conversation about us. Um, I've had guys who come up to me and say, you know, I want to, I never had a man with a big dick, or I never had a man with, uh, who who did this to me. I never had a man who who did that to me. And I said, what I have, and I, and, and, (laughs) Because I had low self-esteem. And when you have low self-esteem, you put your, it seems like these guys who want to take, a, take advantage of you, these guys who want to control you or abuse you, they could see that in your face. They could see that you have low self-esteem. They could smell it. I had quite a few guys, you know, they, they just knew that you had low self-esteem. So when I got sober, and, and I don't want to so much say about high self-esteem. It took a while to have high self-esteem about, you know, to feel good about myself. Didn't happen overnight. But I, when I first got sober, one of the things is no drink, don't, in 90 days, no drinking, no drugging, and no relationships, and no sex. Now, that's kind of, you know, some guys, you know. I had a, a sponsor who said, I had a gay sponsor who said, no, no drinking, no drugging, no relationship, no sex. <laughs> and then again, if I'm not drinking and drugging, I mean, if I'm not going to the bars or going to the, uh, the, the bathhouses and going to the parks, the sex part, you know, I, I wasn't going to have sex. I mean, I wasn't going to go there because those places were, how you say, uh, that's where I drugged at and drank that. I drank and drug in the parks looking for sex. I drank and drug in the bars 
looking for sex. I drank and drug in the movie houses, the porn movie house, looking for sex. I drank and drug or, or, or in the sex bars or, or on the street, looking for sex. So sex was synonymous with drinking and drugging for me. So now I got sober, getting sober. And uh, the strangest thing is when I got into my very first uh, boyfriend, who wasn't a drinker, wasn't a drug, you know. And then I noticed that people who I thought, mind you now, because um, I'm still alive, I'm still walking, you know, going to different meetings and have some of my friends. A lot of my friends I lost because all my drinking buddies, they left me. They said, well, they said I wasn't fun anymore. And I said, no, because I'm not acting stupid. I'm not fun anymore. So I didn't have a chance to come across those so-called humpy, hairy men with big dicks, you know, who will screw, screw you to death all night. I haven't had a chance to come to that when I was getting sober. And when I did come, did, um, let's say, meet one by chance, because I'm dealing with friends going to meetings, going here. Sometimes you meet one by chance. Um, they didn't want anything to do with me. And I don't know if it has anything to do with high self-esteem, like, like the title, but they didn't want anything to do with me because I wasn't drinking and drugging. If you're not drinking and drugging and act stupid, they can't take advantage of you. If they can't take advantage of you, they have no, no use for you. If they can't control the way, you know, they can't. I had one, he wasn't a friend of mine. Uh, his name was Albert. And Albert and I was fooling around with the same person. But he stayed with Albert. Uh, I think it was 10 years him and I fooled around. And Albert was always there. I only met him in the bars. If I, I might have sex with him two or three times a year, but the only time I met him was in the bar. And of course, when we want to fool around, after we both get high, we go to Albert's house. But Albert and them were in a relationship, and I, and I think they call it what, an open relationship. But the way he treated Albert was, was humiliating. And Albert was in love with him. But I couldn't understand that. And I remember when I got sober, even when I was drinking, I said I didn't want to be an Albert. After, after a while, when you're drinking, you, I became an Albert, you know. You're with somebody because they make you feel good sexually. I had to use that terminology, sexually. They didn't make you feel good as a person. They make you feel good as, as you know, sexually. And then you know what, you know, if you want them to spend the night and they'd be saying, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. And I said, well, honey, I'll give you money, you know, if just for the night, and then you could go look for work tomorrow. They never have a job, these guys. That was my drinking and drugging. So now I, I, I've been sober. I think my first relationship I was sober for about a year. Over, I know it was over 90 days. And I had my first sober uh, boyfriend, and I thought he was boring. Because he didn't dr didn't drink, didn't drug. There was no uh, excitement. Now it's an excitement. There was no drama. So when you stop drinking and drugging, you have less drama. There was no drama. And I kind of like it. It took me a while. We stayed together for five months. And it was different. I mean, the sex was okay. It wasn't that crazy sex. And it was... It was more passionate. That's another thing. When you stop drinking and drugging, and when you begin to feel good about yourself, that um, you start having the sex change. More passionate, more kissing, more caring. So that took a while. So let's, go, let's fast forward 10 years, 20 years. Right now I'm 40 years sober. So let's say 20 years, after 20 years of sobriety, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I've come across guys on a date line. They, um, I said, one guy, we had an argument on the phone. We talked on the phone. And um, he didn't have a car, didn't have a job, um, living with his brother. And uh, he sent me pictures. According to the pictures, I mean, fantastic. I would love to have him in my bed. But um, I told him, I said, well, I'm not driving to pick you up to come to my house. And uh, I'm not going to have you eat all my food. 
I said, when you get a job and you get yourself together and get some money together, get a car, call me. <laughs> it took 20 years for me to come to, to realize I feel good about myself. I work hard for my money. I don't need some guy. To, I don't need to pay a guy to come to have sex with me or pay for love, as they say. You know, you, you, you get somebody who stayed with you for what, um, what, for however long. You know, I liked it when I was drinking and drugging, you had a boyfriend. Oh, I got a boyfriend. And they, you bring them to one of the gay parties. And everybody, oh, they, oh, that's your boyfriend? Oh, my God, he's hot. And he's this. Yeah, he's hot. But meanwhile, I'm, I was paying for it out of my pocket. I didn't have to go through that in sobriety. I didn't want to go through that. It got to the point is I want somebody to be with me because they want me. They want to be as passionate, compassionate. And we make love, not just sex. We make love. Now, you may say, what brought this on? It's just that I've been on the line lately, and I've had dealings with people online, that is. These guys, they want to do this, they want to do that. Um, and then when I start asking questions, they never answer my question, you know. Now, I, one guy I, I asked online, I said, um, so... Um, I said, what, uh, I, he was at work. It was after five. I said, oh, you just got off work. Oh, no, he just got out of class. I said, class? He was learning how to drive a truck. And I said, oh, okay, so, uh, so what do you do? Um, I, I'm not doing, what he said? I said, oh, so uh, what do you do for a living? He says that, I, this is what he said. He said, I can take care of myself. He didn't say I had a job. He said, I can take care of myself. And then I asked, oh, so, so um, you live alone? No, I have a roommate. Okay. So he, checked the, so he doesn't have a job if he could take care of himself. Well, he had a job, he would say he had a job. And he's living with a roommate, probably living with some guy who's taking care of him. And uh, I, didn't get, I, I didn't get to the... I stayed away from all the other... He never once said that he had his own place. He never once said he had a job. Um, and he never brought up the fact, he never brought up the fact for us to meet. See, I've been doing this, this, this date thing for a long time. And I noticed that I would have to push the issue. Let me push the issue. They always wait for me to make a statement about, oh, wouldn't it be nice to meet? And then you say, wouldn't it be nice to meet? They say, oh, yeah, let's, let's meet. I had one guy who said he was definitely would like to meet me. He said that, um, what train and bus uh, take me to your, to, to your city? I said, we don't, there is no train or bus to take me to the city. I said, in the nearest city, you have to take a bus to the nearest city. Then, then you got to take a cab, you know, to you know, which costs a lot of money to get to my house. And he said, oh, uh, you can't pick me up <laughs> at the bus stop? I said, no. I said, if you ain't got a car to get here, you keep your ass right where you are. I hope I didn't bore you with this podcast, with you listening to the craziness that lives inside my head.